You work with an overweight 65-year-old resident with no known history of heart disease. He begins to complain of sudden severe, crushing pain under his breastbone. The pain has lasted more than five minutes. What problem should you think of right away and what should you do? A. Heartburn, tell him to take an antacid. B. Angina, phone his personal physician. C. Heart attack, phone 911. D. Arrhythmia, drive him to an emergency department. Answer, C. Heart attack, phone 911. You witness the collapse of a 45-year-old man and begin performing CPR after someone has phoned 911. The first two links in the chain of survival, activate EMS and start CPR, have been completed. What is the third link in the chain, which will have the greatest effect on increasing this man's chance of survival? A. Arrival of a rescuer with a defibrillator. B. Transportation of the man to the hospital. C. Arrival of paramedics who will administer drugs. D. Arrival of EMS personnel who can do CPR. Answer A. Arrival of a rescuer with a defibrillator. You have been talking with a 60-year-old man who is alert and conversing. All at once, he complains of a sudden weakness on one side of his face and in one arm, and he is also having trouble speaking. What is the most likely cause of this problem? A. A seizure. B. Stroke. C. Heart attack. D. Diabetic coma. Answer. B. Stroke. You remove a three-year-old from the bottom of the shallow end of a swimming pool. The child is limp and unresponsive. No one else is available to help. When should you phone 911? A. After you've given the child two minutes of CPR. B. As soon as you remove the child from the pool. C. When you see that after several minutes of CPR there is no response. D. After giving a few ventilations and before beginning chest compressions. Answer A. After you've given the child two minutes of CPR. You are a volunteer setting up a public access defibrillation program at a mall that has purchased an AED. The mall's security director asks. Why do the security guards need to learn CPR and be trained to use the AED? Which is the best response? A. Rescuers don't need to learn CPR if they can use an AED. B. Rescuers need to be able to verify the rhythm analyzed by the AED. C. Rescuers need to know when and how to use the AED safely and to perform the steps of CPR for unresponsive victims. D. Please ask the mall management why they want the guards to learn the AED. Answer, C. Rescuers need to know when and how to use the AED safely and to perform CPR. You're responding to a call about a child found unresponsive in bed with no sign of trauma. How should you open her airway? A. Place your fingers in her mouth and pull forward on the lower jaw. B. Do the jaw thrust maneuver. C. Tilt her head and lift her chin. D. Pull her tongue forward. Answer. C. Tilt her head and lift her chin. Before providing rescue breathing for an unresponsive victim, you must check for breathing. You do this by A. Looking into the victim's mouth to see if the airway is blocked. B. Shaking or tapping the victim's shoulder to stimulate breathing. C. Checking the pupils. D. Looking to see if the chest rises and falls as the victim breathes. Answer, D, looking to see if the chest rises and falls as the victim breathes. In the hospital cafeteria, you see a woman grasping her throat with both hands. What should you do first to find out if she is truly choking? A, give her five back blows. B, give her five abdominal thrusts. C, ask her, are you choking, and be prepared to give five abdominal thrusts. D, shake her and shout, are you okay? Answer, C, ask her, are you choking, and be prepared to give abdominal thrusts. You are providing rescue breathing for an infant using a bag mask device. Which action confirms that each rescue breath is adequate? A, determining the infant's weight and calculating tidal volume. B, observing if the chest rises with each rescue breath. C, choosing the correct size bag mask device, which guarantees adequate breaths.
D. Delivering breaths quickly with high peak inspiratory pressures. Answer, B. Observing if the chest rises with each rescue breath. What is the correct depth of chest compressions in an adult? A. As deep as possible. B. Up to 2 inches. C. Between 2 and 2.4 inches. D. At least 3 inches. Answer, C. Between 2 and 2.4 inches. How long should a pulse check last in an unresponsive adult? A. As long as it takes to find a pulse. B. No longer than 2 seconds. C. No longer than 5 seconds. D. No longer than 10 seconds. Answer, D. No longer than 10 seconds. Where should you check for a pulse in an unresponsive adult during an emergency? A. Carotid artery. B. Brachial artery. C. Femoral artery. D. Radial artery. Answer, A. Carotid artery. Where should you check for a pulse in an unresponsive infant during an emergency? A. Carotid artery. B. Brachial artery. C. Femoral artery. D. Radial artery. Answer, B. Brachial artery. A child is gasping for breath but has a pulse rate of 100 per minute. What should you do? A. Start CPR, beginning with compressions. B. Give one breath every 6 seconds. C. Give one breath every 2 to 3 seconds. D. Do nothing, the child is not in distress. Answer, C. Give one breath every 2 to 3 seconds. A child is not breathing and has a pulse rate of 50 per minute. What should you do? A. Start CPR, beginning with chest compressions. B. Give one breath every 6 seconds. C. Give one breath every 2 to 3 seconds. D. Do nothing, the child is not in distress. Answer, A. Start CPR, beginning with chest compressions. A 70-year-old man has been eating steak in a restaurant. He abruptly stands up and grabs his neck. You determine that he is choking. The best initial response is to A. Use back blows. B. Do nothing. C. Use abdominal thrusts, Heimlich maneuver. D. Use upward chest thrusts. Answer, C. Use abdominal thrusts. An infant who has been choking becomes unresponsive. What do you do? A. Alternate back slaps and chest thrusts. B. Perform a blind finger sweep. C. Attempt to dislodge the obstruction. D. Begin CPR. Answer, D. Begin CPR. Efforts to relieve choking should be stopped when A. The obstruction is removed. B. The victim becomes unresponsive. C. The victim begins breathing normally. D. If any of the above occurs. Answer, D. If any of the above occurs. In which of the following situations is moving a patient during CPR appropriate? A. The patient is laying on his stomach. B. The patient is in a burning building. C. The patient is on a soft mattress. D. The patient is in a place or position where you cannot do CPR effectively. E. All of the above. Answer, E. All of the above. In to rescue CPR for a victim aged between 1 year and puberty, the chest compression to breath ratio is A. 15 colon 1 B. 15 colon 2 C. 30 colon 1 D. 30 colon 2 Answer, B, 15 colon 2. Over what age should you use the adult AED pads on a victim? A, 8 years of age. B, 12 years of age. C, 18 years of age. D, 21 years of age. Answer, A, 8 years of age. What is the recommended length of time for a pulse check? A, as long as it takes to find a pulse. B. No longer than 2 seconds. C. No longer than 5 seconds. D. No longer than 10 seconds. 
Answer, D, no longer than 10 seconds. What is the approximate rate of compressions in adult CPR? A, 60 per minute. B, 80 per minute. C, 100 up to 120 per minute. D, 60 to 100 per minute. Answer, C, 100 up to 120 per minute. Which of the following is not a component of high-quality CPR? A. At least 100 chest compressions per minute. B. Minimal interruptions in CPR. C. Allowing complete chest recoil. D. All are components of high-quality CPR. Answer. D. All are components of high-quality CPR. What does AED stand for? A. Automatic Energy Delivery. B. Automated External Device. C. Automated external defibrillator. D. Autonomous energy defibrillator. Answer. C. Automated external defibrillator.